Hi, I'm Wesley with 22 Zines, and welcome back to the 22 Zine Awards, in which I share all the zines, well, you know, all, one per creator, that I got in 2023, and grant out fabulous awards, <laughs> with no prizes. <laughs> um, yeah, I just need to stop announcing the amount of time that things are going to take, because I can just never anticipate it. It is butt-ass cold out here officially. In this house it is butt-ass cold without a space heater, and the space yard I have is very loud and noisy and so does not make for good video. So I have decided that enough is enough. I'm just going to come on and do this uh, in more appropriate attire than my beloved paisley tie. So my apologies for the lack of formality in this one, but these zines are no less amazing and deserving of accolade than the previous zines. These zines are all zines that I received in a trade with somebody. <laughs> I have a few that could go in this category that are going to go a little later. Don't worry about it. We're starting off with zines that I received in a trade. The first award that I have is for most inspiring, and that is going to Schoolyard Mythologies from Polonius Press. This little mini zine is so cool and so absolutely inspiring. First off, the collage in here is so great. It's really colorful and intentionally layered, and it just manages to feel so full despite being such a little mini zine. <laughs> like it, it, everything feels like it has such a good place, and the the sense of color throughout is just really great and makes it such a pleasure to flip through. What I, the reason that I wanted to grant this one the award of most inspiring is because the uh, concept itself was something that I hadn't really thought about actively, but triggered something that's been floating around in my mind a lot, where every now and then you just get this memory of something that you used to do as a kid. And especially for me, when I'm exploring more um, philosophy and metaphysics and witchcraft and just generally considering my place in the world and my place in the universe, this really feels like a, a starting point that is somewhat neglected of things that you believed as a kid that you don't necessarily believe anymore. Uh, but what felt natural and what, what felt so easy to accept and adopt and believe as a kid, um, these mythologies and these folk tales and these beliefs that we have and we carry on in such a natural but casual way just through our interactions with other children and through, uh, you know, the, the medium of schoolyard rhymes, schoolyard games, or just other beliefs. And so these are all somewhat witchy or mythical beliefs that the author held. I'm almost jealous of your childhood, but and in thinking about it, I was wondering if I had actually had any experiences like that. And it just inspired me to go on this whole memory train. I ended up writing a big zine piece on it that I'll be including in a future one of my zines. I have so many little journal entries, and it just really stuck in my mind and made me inspired to explore the concept and explore it as my own. And really just the the straightforward way that everything is shared here feels makes it feel so real and personal. I just really, really love it. It is completely inspiring. So <laughs> I am granting the award of Most Inspiring to Schoolyard Mythologies by Polonius Press. The next award that I have is for Most Colorful, aka the Eyeburn Award. <laughs> and uh, the author probably already knows after hearing that award that this is going to them. This is for Mall Date 2008 by Edward, also known as Catboy Riot. Yeah, Edward, you knew this was coming for you, right? <laughs> this zine, Mall Date 2008, is this little... Um, I almost want to call it like a digital scrapbook or it's this, it's this super colorful, hyper bright digital collage that is, uh, just detailing the adventures through the mall of these two 
cat boys who are dating. And it's just, it is so fun and colorful and like, what what is it? It's like glitchcore emo inspiration. It is, it is nuts. This is the kind of, okay, the kid, the characters here are the kind of kids that I thought were so cool when I was in middle school, but I didn't feel like I was cool enough to actually be one of them, which to me is so funny in hindsight <laughs> because I was just as much of a dork. But anyway, they go through and they get food and snacks, they get piercings, they just do all the sorts of things that you can do in a mall. Um, I suppose I should say an American mall <laughs> because this does feel very <laughs> American. I mean, overall, I think that all of Edward's zines are just so full and, and layered and detailed and I don't even know what you would call it, but you get these little duplicates, you get things split into RGB and it is hard to read and yet it feels easy. Like, it is certainly not the easiest thing to be staring at for hours on end. It is very bright, but you know, you, you aren't really... The whole thing is just a vibe, you know? The point of it all is just to get the experience. And that is what I feel. You really get a lot of feeling from this because of the colors and because of the style and characters. You get the very pixelated lines. Um, you get the the crazy layers. You get, like, the weird font that's very digital and... I don't know. It's just so cool. I also, this is, this is such a small thing, but I really love the size of this zine. It is like, it's folded like a mini zine, but it's folded from like legal size paper or is it legal or tabloid? Let me, let me see. Legal size paper, I think, which is slightly longer. I don't know. Um, anyway, just more room to fit even more color in there. <laughs> and okay, I know that I said I'm doing one zine per person, and I hope that this doesn't make me seem um, like I'm giving preferential treatment, but I also just want to give a brief shout out to another one of Edward's zines, Gender is So Fake, Become a Cat Boy Today. So if you happen to be doing a trade or purchasing some zines from Edward, I highly recommend that you pick up this one while you're at it. Anyway, Mall Date 2008 definitely gets the Eyeburn Award, aka Most Colorful Zine. The next award is for Best Debut Zine, so the best first zine that somebody created, published, printed, and shared out there. And for that, I am giving the award to Headbanged by Samir. This zine is so fucking cool! It is bright and pink and colorful. All right, all right. Let me try and get a little more organized. I'm, I feel so proprietary and so excited about these uh, traded zines I have because, of course, I've gotten to interact with the zinester directly in sort of a new, in, in a cool way. <laughs> so, of course, I get a little bit more attached to them because I get to meet the person behind the zine. Okay, okay. Headbanged is a Persian, now a Persian series. There are either three or four, I can't remember if four is officially out yet, uh, issues of it now. And I'll just read what Samir, how, how Samir described it at the beginning. This is Headbanged, a zine that is proudly for the queer and disabled people who are tired of letting this shitty, ableist, heteronormative society dominate our lives. And I completely love that. So this, um, <laughs> this is a debut, this is Samir's debut zine, which sort of started after a, a class project. So the assignments guidelines were just make a zine. And so there you go. Here's Samir's zine. I really appreciate how the assignment for this particular zine seemed to be so flexible that it was just make whatever you want, say whatever you want, and it feels very authentic and real and saying what you want to say. Because I know that in many cases, assignments, like zine, zine making assignments, are not exactly the best way to encourage people to say what they actually feel. I mean, the academ academia context like that is not always the most comfortable, but I I think that I'm, I'm very glad <laughs> in this case that Samir was able to be 
encouraged and motivated through this class assignment to create the Headbang series because I think it is so great. <laughs> this whole zine is a rebellion and reclamation. It is a rejection of the things that people try to force on you or society tries to force on you and claiming things that are not designed for you or that people say that you shouldn't like or or whatever they are just an act of claiming of these are things that I like and things that I deserve and here are things that we can just leave in the fucking trash I mean I just I think this is such a great zine it 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 captures more of that energetic um, punk revolution rebellion than any of my zines ever have. And uh, for this to be the very first zine that Samir made, I mean, I can just tell he is going to have such a long and lovely zine making career and life. And I am just so very happy to have um, gotten in on the ground floor with one of <laughs> we, so that Samir one day you can say oh yes one of my early day trades was with Wesley of 22 zines <laughs> if you even remember me at that point when you're a big famous zinester anyway all right headbanged I think definitely deserves the title of best debut zine the next award is for best reclamation and that award goes to Divinely Cursed by Steel Transplants. This award is really about the claiming of things that other people and society have tried to exclude you from. That's kind of what I mean by reclamation. And this whole zine uses a lot of Catholic and religious Christian imagery to become queer positive and to to really take it and claim the power of those structures for your own. It is it is a poetry collage art zine, so it's not really like a religious argument or anything like that. It really is about claiming transness and claiming queerness as something that is worthy of worship and that um, placing gender nonconformity into history and asserting that um, just as much as anybody else and perhaps even more queer people are divine. And this whole zine really reminds me of this quote that I can't remember the author of this quote. I'll put it up on the screen, but it goes, God made me trans for the same reason that he made wheat but not bread, so that we might share in the act of creation. I, th And these are just like such, such beautiful things that it's like whether or not you actually attribute a sort of spiritual power to the Christian God or uh, Christian church or anything, that you're kind of you're claiming the power that society as the on the whole has given it and you are declaring yourself as worthy of worship and just as much of um not simply by nature of being human and not like oh well we're all human and so we all deserve it but specifically because of your gender and because of your nonconformity, because of queerness, that queerness itself is something to be lauded and worshipped. And I feel like that is such a strong way of reclaiming that does not dismiss or ignore or otherwise try to, you know, avoid the queerness and avoid the importance of it, but actively trying to enshrine it. And of course, just <laughs> as a zine, I mean, it's so cool. It's so beautiful, these these collages, and um, it's got all this old religious imagery, which, I mean, I know that a lot of queer people have kind of a love affair with Catholic imagery, and so if you are one of, if you are a fellow fan of <laughs> this weird Catholic shit, like, I think this is just such a beautiful zine to to have and to inspire you and to really um, give yourself the power that you have and the power that you have claimed as a trans person. So I am giving Best Reclamation to Divinely Cursed by Steel Transplants.
The next award is for Best Voice, and that goes to Many Gods No Masters by Elliot Stewart. This scene kind of has a similar theme of uh, religion <laughs> involved, and this is about uh, Elliot's experience as a polytheist, as a pagan polytheist, and also as a trans person. <laughs> so what do you know, like trans, trans religion, we got two in a row here. First off, I really love just at the very beginning, the uh, sort of descriptions that Elliot gives us of some of the gods that he follows, sort of like um, you get the title, you get some associations, like things that are associated with that deity. You have devotion acts and offerings that Elliot participates in. Uh, if they have holiday and their the god's family members and then songs that Elliot associates with them. And I really love that. And then you get a brief description of how Elliot first started um, discovering, learning more about interacting with that god. And it's just... it. It's really fun. You get these little bits of personal history that are throughout about different experiences doing like a potluck at a coven and first seeing them and seeing some of their imagery online and on Tumblr. And I just, I, th I, I totally relate to that. And generally just at what point Elliot really took them seriously. I don't know how else to put that, but really started to develop that um, connection, I guess, with particular deities, um, which I just, I really like that. And I, I guess that's a good enough transition just to talk about the, the best voice is really about the writing style overall and the feeling and words and voice that carries through into the writing. And Everything that Elliot writes, I just have to say, it feels like having a conversation. The name of Elliot's uh, imprint, I guess, is uh, Porch Beers Press. And that is such a great word because it really does feel like sitting down and having a beer with this really cool witchy trans dude on on a porch. <laughs> like, it it feels super great because it's it's this combination of memories and um, things that he's been reading or, you know, different instances of life, different musings and all that sort of thing, but it doesn't feel pretentious. And I think sometimes when you get memoir, it can feel pretentious. I mean, I don't know that I've really found a zine that I find pretentious. <laughs> I don't know if zines can be really that pretentious, but you know, sometimes when you're reading memoirs and you're, or you're reading bios that authors write about themselves, it's just like, okay, oh my God, get on with it. Or you feel like they're trying too hard to be relatable. And this just is, this really does feel like this is just who Elliot is. And these are things that have come up and, you know, it's, it's casual, but it's not, othering. It's casual, but it's not distant. It feels really personal and real, but also not overwhelming. You just get these little, you know, lines and that are like, here's one that I'm finding. I saw it as a bit of a hitchhiker's guide situation with us going, ah, oh, fuck this again, until we finally learned whatever lesson needed to be pounded into us. That just, <laughs> I just really love the, the overall voice to this and it really does feel like there are instances where Elliot uses the word you and just talks directly to you like if you're one for world travel there is a fantastic sculpture of Mananen by John Sutton in Londonderry, Northern Ireland he was stolen once, the thief leaving behind a cross with a painted Bible verse, the statue was found about a month later, not far from his home but badly damaged, and so it's just these little things of like sharing some fun information with you, sharing some fun instances and fun recommendations and being like, oh yeah, you should check this out. It, it, I, the reason why I feel like this is so great and so important and so powerful and why I love really all of Elliot's zines is because I think it really captures that sense of connection that I think so many people are looking for when they are reading zines, that personal feeling that makes you really want to become friends with somebody and see the zine as an extension of the self in 
a very real and honest way. So I am happy to award best voice to Many Gods No Masters by Elliot Stewart. And I can say this could just as easily go to any of Elliot's other zines, so definitely check them out. Next up, we have a zine that I am excited about. This is Most Educational, and that goes to It's Good to Be Curious by Winifred Kell. This zine is a collection of comics and images that are uh, giving you information about the natural world and uh, little tidbits of biology, of fossils, history, and uh, geology and ecology. I think this is really cool because it doesn't feel too simple and it also doesn't feel too complicated. I feel like a lot of times there are instances where you want to learn fun facts about something and it's either something that feels too basic. I mean, you know, you never know what someone's already going to know or not, but it's one of those things where if you learn something that, you know, it says, bats use echolocation. And it's one of those things where it's like, okay, yeah, that's great. And no offense to anybody who didn't already know that, but it does feel a little bit like, okay, kind of learned that in elementary school. <laughs> Is there anything else cool that as an adult I can come to and learn about? Um, I even felt that as a kid where sometimes it just felt like, okay, yeah, duh, is there any other information we can have about this? And I often struggle to find the sort of, um, I suppose, intermediate information because I'm certainly not advanced enough in a study of a particular species or anything like that. But, um, you know, anyway, what I what I really like about this, it feels like going to a science fair or it feels like when you're a kid and you do like a report studying all about a particular animal or, you know, some places they did like you learn about a particular country and everybody gets to share about their country, it feels like that. But about these different biological and uh, ecological uh, facts. And so the whole thing, it feels fun, it feels understandable, it feels personal, and it is real and fascinating and everything is just it's just so it's so interesting <laughs> I don't know how else to put it but like it really makes nonfiction feel great it makes it feel friendly and it feels like it's actually educational and appropriate for many different levels if you want to learn some really fun things about the natural world and just have this super fun book full of fun facts, I guarantee you're going to learn something new. I highly recommend It's Good to Be Curious by Winifred Kell. Next up, we have the Biggest Engagement Award, and that goes to Valerie Barr. I could have chosen one of many zines, but I decided to pick this one because it's my personal favorite. It goes to It's Me, a zine about childhood by Valerie Barr and many contributors. So this particular zine features a bunch of photos that people sent in from childhood. Some of them we see the photo itself and a description of what the photo is, who they are, and how, how the person feels about it, just like a brief description of the person and what year the photo is from. And in some of them, we see drawings that Valerie did of photos that were sent in. And these drawings are so cute and especially being able to see it next to other childhood photos. I feel like it definitely captures the the spirit of childhood so well. I really love the faces. They look they look real and dorky and childlike. I mean, drawing kids is so hard, seriously. But just something about the lines and the flow and the way that the way that Valerie does mouths and teeth in particular, I feel like it's just so great. We get, you know, the big goofy teeth. I, I can't stop staring at Nick Jenkins 1981 here. <laughs> Look at this kid. All right. Um, yeah, so you, so you get a variety of photographs and then drawings that Valerie did of certain photographs that were sent in. And so this was uh, done thanks to the submissions of a pretty big group of people. Uh, it has all their names listed in the back. And I think it just comes together into almost like this beautiful group 
family album. And I just want to share this quote that Valerie wrote at the beginning here. There is something kind of surreal and secret magic seeing people you know before you knew them and before they were who they are. And I think that is definitely, you know, captured in in this zine so well. And it does feel magical, even though I don't even know who these people are. But it it feels it feels magical anyway, just to see the tiny little windows of childhood of this big group of friends, family, and acquaintances, as Valerie puts it. I decided to give the award of biggest engagement because Valerie has a series of zines that just have a ridiculous amount of contributions, and frankly, they are all arranged very well. I shared this one because it's my personal favorite, but perhaps a better example of the amount of engagement comes from the Draw a Blank series. So, oh, Draw a Blank, that's actually a word. I, I meant blank, actually. So <laughs> there's a few things. There's um, Draw a Garfield, Draw a Car, Draw a Bicycle, Draw a Shrek. Um, I'll show off Draw Garfield here really quick, where it's just this big, giant uh, collection of um, Garfield drawings that people <laughs> submitted. And so, of course, they are all great, but I just wanted to show this off for um, best engage biggest engagement as well, where you just have this big, giant paragraph of people who drew Garfields and then submitted them. If you want to... Uh, know when Valerie is hosting another one and submit something yourself. It's super casual, it's super fun, and you just get this big giant group of people and it all comes together into this amazing collaborative zine. I mean, I, I really appreciate the, um, I don't know how else to put this, but like the low bar of engagement. This doesn't require people to do this big fancy thing and spend hours and hours, you know, drawing or working on something to have it maybe appear in a zine. This definitely does seem like you want to draw something, it shows up in the zine and you're among dozens of other people who have done the same thing. So I just, I really love the level of engagement that Valerie has fostered the ease of entry, ease of access to these zines, and yeah, I think biggest engagement <laughs> is definitely an award to be given to Valerie Barr. The last thing that I have for this category is the award for most surprising, and that goes to Performing Femininity Trials of Gender from 1986 to 1996 by Vin Caponegro. This zine I have granted the award of most surprising because Vin Caponegro does a lot of little witchy zines and I had purchased a couple of them before. I, I don't mean to dismiss them as little witchy zines. They are great witchy zines, but you know, I think that I had kind of gotten used to that style. I had gotten used to the more, um, non-fiction zines, I suppose. And so when we did our trade, I was fully expecting to get some of those from uh, Snake Hair, which is the uh, publishing press that Vin has created. And so this one was absolutely a surprise and a very welcome one. This zine is a per zine that features a bunch of photographs of Vin through the years, um, both as a, as a child and teenager, basically... Um, growing up as how they describe themselves as a tomboy or as not feeling comfortable calling themselves a woman. And I really, it was such a shock just opening up and seeing these photos all arranged chronologically because it feels like these so easily could have been me. I have definitely had this similar experience of um, being considered very masculine for a girl and um the sort of balance between accepting girlhood and finding empowerment in girlhood and womanhood while also uh accepting that it is not entirely you that it is not entirely your body and it is not how you want to be perceived and all of this is done through just this series of photographs and 
a very brief um, piece of writing in the back. And I just, I think that this actually just quickly became one of my very favorite zines to look through, to recognize how we can still, ex we can, to accept who we were as trans people in the past and to, to come to terms with the fact that society maybe just wasn't ready for us or that we didn't fully understand ourselves or other people didn't allow us to understand ourselves or be perceived in the way that we wish to be perceived. I guess that's about what I have to say on this. I I highly recommend it. And um, if you're also in the mood for some witchy zines, definitely grab those too. But this one in particular was just such an amazing surprise and I was so happy to receive it in the trade. So I am happy to grant most surprising to performing femininity. Like I said, there are a few other zines that probably could have gone in this category. I mean, like I said in the very first video, I did not do a very good job of keeping track of everything. So honestly, almost certainly there were some trades that are going to be accidentally left out of all the videos. Uh, anyway, we'll we'll get to that later. <laughs> if we get to the end of the series and you know that you sent me a zine or we traded or I got a zine from you in 2023 and it does not appear in this series, then let me know and I will pull it out of my zine collection and show it off. But anyway, we've still got a few videos to go, so I will see you soon. Bye.